Hey everyone, it's your girl Vera. I know it's been a while, but I'm back for that Q&A that I promised about being a trans girl in Taiwan, answering your questions, anything about my life uh, with that experience here, or just about myself. So let's get into it. Um, the first question that I have on the docket here is from somebody named Raptara, and they're just asking me a simple one. How's the food in Taipei? It's pretty good. Um, it's a bit real for me. Lots of bones and cartilage in the meat. Um, not used to that. Bit of a sensory thing with that. But other than that, it's really good. It's really fresh. It's really cheap. Um, night markets are a really cool thing here. If you know anything about Taipei, then you know about night markets. Like, all the cheap food vendors, like, packed together in, uh, like, little street markets, um, at night, obviously. Really good stuff. Really good, like, sweet desserts. Um, yeah, I love the, like... Portuguese egg tart things that they have here. Um, I love bubble tea. I've been so addicted to bubble tea recently. Um, what else? I, I, I always get Song Yo Bing scallion pancakes every single weekday for breakfast before I go to work. There's definitely a lot of good food here. And Taipei is like an international city, so it's got really good international food too. I, weirdly enough, I eat a lot of Mexican food here. Um, so yeah, it's good food in Taipei. Um, okay, next one. What do you like about being trans from Kylie or Alex Brooks? Um, that's a good question. My answer is kind of cliche. Probably a lot of trans people will tell you this, but I really love the fact that it's like forced, forced me like realizing that I'm trans, like required like a lot of like digging deep and like introspection and like reflection about myself, assumptions that I've made about myself and like what, what, what I like about myself and like what kind of person I want to be. Um, so yeah, it's just gotten me like really, really like connected with myself and, um, I've, I've really learned to love myself. Like I love myself so much and I love the person that I have like created for myself to be. I love being Vera. Like I made Vera and then became her. Does that make sense? Like it's so, it's so cool to be able to like have this opportunity to like craft the person that you would ideally be if you could be that person and then you, you you make that person into a reality and you become them that's really amazing and i love um having like connections with other trans people like friendships like dating whatever like t for t connections are like so like beautiful and profound and um i love that about being trans too okay um next question how has the atmosphere been in regards to China wanting to take over, and what has your experience been with the subject? Um, so, it kind of spooked me at first before I came to Taiwan, um, but people don't, like, talk about it much here, actually. Um, granted, I don't hang out with, like, a lot of locals, but it, the subject doesn't come up that much, and Taiwanese people have just been, like, dealing with this constant threat of China on their doorstep for so long that, like, most Taiwanese people just... You know, people just live their lives day to day. It's like, what can you really do about it? Um, and so it doesn't really get brought up that much here. So I haven't really, like, had many experiences with it. It does worry me, but it, it worries me on behalf of, like, what would happen to Taiwan. But I'm probably going to leave before anything dangerous would arise. So it doesn't, yeah, I don't know. It doesn't really come up for me. Um, next question. How do the questions from others about your identity differ in Asia versus in the United States? Do you feel like people are more or less understanding where you are now? Thank you and congrats on 1,000 subscribers. So well deserved. From Claire Helena or Helena. I'm not sure how to pronounce that, but thank you so much, Claire. Um, yeah, how do questions differ? Well, I've talked about this a little bit in another video, but there's generally less awareness of trans identity um, and like queerness in general here but there's not like a flaming culture war on the topic so like i don't honestly it also doesn't come up that much i'm, I'm really fortunate to be like i pass pretty well um so like most people don't know that i'm trans as far as i can tell or at least they don't bring it up um and the only people that i really do talk about it with are like other women and queer people that like i'm intentionally having a conversation with about it um, and those conversations end up being pretty similar to the U.S. Like, people are chill. I, I, I think a skill, a strength of mine is finding good 
chill people who, you know, I'm not gonna be friends with somebody who, like, would be weird about me being trans anyway, so. Yeah, and, like, it just doesn't come up, like, much from, like, random strangers and locals and stuff, because, fortunately, I pass well, and I think that would be pretty taboo here, even more so than in the U.S., to just, like, randomly question somebody's gender. Um, okay. Next question. Hey, I am a cis guy, and I love to travel, but I never have to consider my gender when doing so. How did you end up in Taiwan, and how do you decide when to travel? Um, from somebody whose display name is HK Getz, or Gates, G-E-H-T-S, not sure how to say that. Um, and then I've grouped this with another question, why did you move to Asia from Courtney and D Trans? Okay, thanks guys um, for those questions. So, um, I'll just quickly answer how did you end up in Taiwan and why did you move to Asia together. Um, a, few guys, a, few, a few of you probably know this story already um, if you watch the channel a lot. But basically, when I was a teenager, I dated a girl from China. She was like an exchange student in my high school, basically. We met right before I graduated, and I ended up going to China with her. That was my first experience traveling um, out of the country ever, and I went to China with her for a month. Um, and basically, it was just because I had the opportunity to, because she said her parents would pay for everything except my flight ticket, and I was like, okay, I'll do it. My mom convinced me to, actually. Um, and so yeah, I was dating her, and I ended up minoring in Chinese and getting really interested in Chinese culture. And even before that, I was really interested in living abroad. So once I graduated, you know, this was my plan for a long time, was to just leave the U.S. once I graduated. I had studied Chinese. China wasn't looking like a good option because of, like, political stuff, the fact that I'm queer, and COVID stuff. So they speak Chinese in Taiwan, so that seemed like a better option if I wanted to use my Chinese that I had studied. Um, so that is why I came to Taiwan, why I came to Asia. Um, how do you decide when to travel? I basically travel when I have the opportunity to, when I have a, enough money, when it makes sense in my life. Um, like I said, I've just been planning to move out of the U.S. after I graduated for quite a long time. So that was, um, that was like a pre, a pre-planned thing. I've been planning on this for a while. Um, and your first thought about, hey, I'm a cis guy and I love to travel, but I never have to consider my gender when doing so. Yeah, um, that was, it, it was definitely a concern, but fortunately, like I said, since I passed well, it doesn't come up much. Um, like a year and a half ago, I went to Peru, and it was a little bit sketchier then, but I was traveling with, like, a friend, um, who was, from outward appearances at the time, a cis guy, even though they aren't a cis guy. But um, that's how they appeared at the time, and that, like, made me safer, and also I just have, like, a pretty cavalier attitude about things, like, I'm gonna go travel, I don't care what people say or do or whatever, like, I'll, I can take care of myself, like, I'll deal with it, it's fine. Um, but I am glad that I have my friend there to, like, you know, we can rely on each other for safety a little bit. Um, okay, and next question, what is it like living in a completely different environment, if it was any different how so from somebody named Vana I think Vana V-A-N-A -A, all caps thank you Vana for the question um I mean it's so different like moving to the other side of the planet is challenging like it's really hard I can't honestly I can't like state that enough I um haven't had the best mental health this past year I've been kind of depressed and I've realized that like I really depend on social connections as like a foundational element of like stability in my life and so the biggest change for me was being away from everybody that I've ever loved and cared about in my whole life all of my friends back home my community like everything was just gone and I had to like struggle to like establish myself socially here and like have those like intimate intent or yeah intimate but also just like intense like, genuine emotional connections with people that, like, I really, really depend on, and it was hard not having that at first, but I am starting to get to a place where I really have that, but that was definitely the hardest part, being away from my friends, family, community, all that, um, completely different environment, the main thing, that it doesn't have the people that I love and care about, okay, next question, <laughs> what do you miss the most from the U.S., from Naxos, love you, um, okay, like I said, 
family, friends, my community. I miss everybody. I miss you. Um, and honestly, the food. Like, I really want Olive Garden. I want a chili dog. I want mac and cheese. I, like, being away from, like, I, I don't know, they have, like, some American food here, but it's just, like, all the food that I grew up with, like, which I didn't even realize it, but, like, comfort food for me. And not having that accessible, oh, I get craving sometimes, for sure. <laughs> okay. What has been the biggest culture shock about your move? From David Kent. Um, food is a big one. Like I said, the meat is a little too real for me sometimes. All the bones and cartilage and fat and not having the, the food that I'm used to. Um, in terms of culture shock, though, the other really big thing is, like, clothing norms. People dress very warmly and very modestly here. Like, long sleeves and pants all the time, even when it's warm out kind of blows my mind, and especially the first couple weeks when, like, it was <laughs> summer and I had, like, just stepped out and, like, everybody was in, like, jackets and long sleeves and pants and it was, like, 95 degrees, like, 30 plus Celsius. <laughs> and I was, like, doing my normal thing of, like, cropped tank tops and, like, mini skirts and micro shorts and I felt naked compared to everybody else. And obviously everyone was staring at me, which, I like, you know, now I realize because I'm a foreigner, mostly because I'm white. I'm like a tall, foreign, white girl with aggressively curly hair. I definitely stand out here. And then the way that I dress does compound that, but like, yeah, I definitely stand out. So um, it really freaked me out how much I was getting stared at. And I like really tied that to like, oh my God, everybody dresses so differently from me. It's so crazy. But I actually think that like, I don't know, I would get stared at anyway. And I kind of like being stared at sometimes. Sometimes it's not cool, but sometimes it's like, uh, yeah, I'm a hot girl. Like, you should be staring at me. <laughs> okay, and then the last question that we have. What is your favorite album from my brother? Um, going on his Venetian Diaspora account. It's very cool. Weird, trippy little videos. Look, at him, look it up on YouTube and Instagram. Venetian Diaspora. Okay, what is my favorite album? You know it's Weezer, baby. The Blue Album, 1994. Classic. Yeah, I mean, there's gotta be, you know, like, ever since I was 14, that's been my go-to favorite album, and I love so many different albums, and it's really hard to choose a favorite, but that's been my go-to forever, so, yeah, Weezer, uh, Blue Album, 1994. Um, I also really like this album called, I, I, I mean, I love so many albums, but just recently I was thinking about another favorite of mine, Healing by In Love With A Ghost, which is this really cool, like, artsy, gay little... I don't know, it's kind of like a combination of like chip tunes and piano and lo-fi and a bunch of different things. <laughs> it's really creative and it tells this awesome story just through like song titles and like art on like the YouTube uploads and like motifs and just like the com the composition of the songs themselves. Um, it's really cool and it's so gay, it's so gay. What my, Like one of the best songs is called Am I a boy? Am I a girl? Do I even really care anymore? And then, anyway, I'm hungry. Yeah. <laughs> anyway, I love that album so much. And In Love With The Ghost, she is super cool. Um, follow her on Twitter, too. Yeah, definitely a favorite album of mine. Okay, <laughs> that is all the questions that I have for today. So, I just wanted to say quickly, I've said this so many times on my channel about like, oh my god, I'm gonna finally start making videos consistently, like, watch out guys, here it comes. I've realized that like, I've been just really depressed the past year and really struggling with like executive functioning, especially here in Taiwan. I was really depressed at first because of like lacking those like social connections and stuff. And like, I think I could make YouTube videos. Like, I have the ability to like, run a channel and like make videos that apparently people like and care about. Um, I really love, like, the community that I have here, and I love, like, how much you guys enjoy these videos and like discussing, like, queerness and identity and now living abroad, like, I'm getting some people that are into that too, um, so yeah, I really like having this channel, and I'm so excited that it's at 1000, but I just really struggle with, like, executive functioning stuff, and like, I, I know that I could make videos and have this channel grow and be successful, but I can't do it. Like, actually being able to do that, even though I know that I have the potential, is, it's really hard. And my life has been kind of difficult the past year, 
but I think it's moving in a really good direction right now. Um, so I'm not going to make any promises, but I would love to keep making videos on this channel, and I just know that I'm going to get there eventually. I'm going to be able to make videos consistently and really put energy into like growing this channel eventually. I don't know if that'll be right now. I don't know if it'll be in a month or a few months or a year or a few years, but hopefully sooner rather than later. And yeah, I'm just really happy to be making this video for you guys because it's been a while and I have the motivation to do it today. So I'll take that. So thank you guys so much for watching. Go ahead and watch another video. Um, if you, if you choose to do so, I would appreciate that. Leave a like, subscribe, all the YouTube things to help me grow the channel. And, oh, I have to go take out the trash. So I will see you guys later. Bye.